In the previous video, we talked about the three definitions of what acids and bases actually are. This time we're going to talk about strength and the strength of an acid. Strong acids completely dissociate in water. That means when you put an acid, a strong acid, in water, it's going to give off 100% of its hydrogen. This hydrogen then reacts with water to form something called hydronium. And we're left with the conjugate base. We are going to use a one-way arrow for the strong acids because it goes in this direction and this direction only. Equilibrium lies far, far, far to the right because the reaction does not go in the opposite direction. Weak acids, however, partially dissociate. They might not give off 100% of their hydrogen. They might only give off 5% of its hydrogen. So because of this, we draw the reaction with equilibrium arrows. The reaction goes this way. It also goes in this direction. There's seven strong acids. I know this says six, but there's seven that you guys are familiar with. They mentioned them in the previous video, I think we did. HCl, HBr, HI, HNO3, H2SO4, HClO3, and HClO4. I know it doesn't have the three here, but it is one as well. The strength of the acid, if you'll remember, strong acids always have very, very weak conjugate bases. Very weak acids have stronger conjugate bases. And acids with mid-range strength have conjugate bases with mid-range strength. So therefore, the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. The stronger base always accepts the most protons in an acid-base reaction. There are always two bases, the base on the reactant side and the conjugate base on the product side. In this particular situation, I've got HBr, which is an acid, and water. I'm going to produce hydronium and bromide. Hydronium is going to be the conjugate acid to water. Bromide is my conjugate base to HBr. So, oops. So water and bromide are both competing for protons. They're both bases. They want to accept a proton. Water is the stronger of the two, so it wins most of the time, and the reaction will go to completion. It will go in this direction. In this particular case, ammonia and water are competing for the protons, so they're the bases. Now, ammonia is the stronger of the two, so it wins most of the time, and therefore this reaction lies to the left. This will get a hydrogen and produce this and this. Why are some acids stronger than others? Uh, we say that they want to lose a proton, but nothing obviously wants. Their elements don't have wants and desires. It has more to do with the attraction between the two elements and intermolecular forces. Acid strength increases when moving down a group on the periodic table. And that's because as you go down the group on the periodic table, this element right here, the anion, increases in radius. And the larger the radius is, the farther away the nuclei are between hydrogen and iodine, or hydrogen and bromide, hydrogen and chloride, or hydrogen and fluoride. The farther they are away from each other, the easier it is to release that hydrogen. So if I go down a row, the strength of the acid gets stronger, then that also means as I go down a row, the strength of the conjugate base decreases. There are two types of oxoacids. Oxoacids obviously are acids that have H and O. A hydroxide group bonded to an element that we will call Y, is that which that element is not bonded to any other oxygens. And then we have a hydroxide group bonded to an element Y that is bonded to extra oxygens. Acid strength increases as the electronegativity of Y increases. If you'll remember, electronegativity increases going this way and up on the periodic table. And why is this? That's because the electron density over here pulls more electrons in this area over here, which is leaving that hydrogen over there easier to be released. So if you notice, I have HOI, HOBr, and HOCl. Well, chlorine is the most electronegative out of these three, and therefore the stronger acid. 
So it's kind of the opposite of the if the oxygen wasn't there. If I had HCl, HBr, and HI, HI is the stronger acid. But once I put an oxygen in there, it's the one that's most electronegative. And then notice I've got HOCl, HOCLO, HOCLO2, and HOCLO3, which is HClO4 altogether. Acid strength increases as the number of oxygens are added. The more oxygens I have over here, then I have this more, a larger cluster of electrons, a higher electron density over here, which is making this attraction right here less and less. And therefore, it will release that hydrogen and be a strong acid. Carboxylic acids, coochie coochie coos, are weak organic acids that take this form. Here's the coochie. And then R just represents anything that's attached to it. For example, this right here is a methyl attached to a carboxylic acid. Okay, this is actually called ethanoic acid. And then right here, notice I've got fluorine here instead of the hydrogen here. The more electronegative fluorine's more electronegative, is going to represent the stronger acid because, once again, there's a higher electron density pole over here, making this attraction less and less. Water can self-ionize. If you take water, it can break down into hydronium and hydroxide. It's at equilibrium. So if I was going to write a K expression, it would be this right here. K equals hydronium times hydroxide. Remember, we don't use liquid in our K expressions. And the K value for the autoionization of water is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, which is a freakishly, freakishly small number, which means that this equilibrium favors the left-hand side, which means this. The majority of water stays as water. Do some water molecules ionize? Yes, they do. Very, very small amounts. So now that I have this equation, Kw equals hydronium times hydroxide, and Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, now I can answer some mathematical operations. If the concentration of a hydroxide solution is found to be 1.4 times 10 to the negative 11th, what is the concentration of hydronium? Well, I have this value right here. It's 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. I have this value right here. It's 1.4 times 10 to the negative 11th. I simply solve for hydronium. And you get 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4th. I tend to use H positive to represent my acids. A lot of people tend to use hydronium. Okay, I tend to think that high school kids get kind of freaked out by this 3 here. So I will be using this. This is the equation H X or HA, any acid will do, plus water produces hydronium and its conjugate base. I like to use this one. HX or HA gives off H positive and its conjugate base. So this is the same thing as this. Don't get confused by that.